let's talk about the different types of joins. So we created our joined data frame by using GDP melt as our left-hand data frame and minimum wage as our right-hand data frame. In Pandas, we have five types of joins available to us. The first is called the left join, where we keep all of the values from our left-hand data frame and join values from the right-hand frame. So in other words, in our final data frame, every value that appears in our left-hand data frame will appear in our joined data frame. But it's not necessarily the case that every value from our right-hand data frame will appear in our final joined data frame. When we do a right join, it's the reverse of a left. We keep all the rows from the right-hand data frame and join on values from the left-hand. We have an outer join where we keep all rows from both sides. And anywhere where there's not a matching pair, we fill in null or not a number. We have an inner join. This is where we keep only rows where the index values exist in both data frames. And by default, Pandas uses the left join. So how can you tell which is the left-hand data frame and the right-hand data frame? The left data frame always appears to the left of the join function call, and the right-hand data frame appears inside of the function call. This is probably starting to sound a bit abstract. So let's take a step back and see how pandas will perform our join. We'll look at Newfoundland and Labrador data. GDP melt is our left-hand data frame, and minimum wage is our right-hand data frame. For simplicity's sake, we're going to omit jurisdiction and only join on year. We'll make the assumption that we filtered our data just to Newfoundland and Labrador. First, let's walk through the left join. Remember, GDP is our left-hand table. For every single row in GDP, we're going to scan the right-hand table to see, do we have any rows that have the same year. So we start with our first row. Our year is 2009. We're going to scan through the right-hand table. Our first row is 2006. That's not equal to 2009, so we skip it. 2007 is not equal to 2009, we skip it. 2008 is not equal to 2009, we skip that row. 2009 is equal to 2009, so we have a matching pair, which means in our output data frame, we'll have the combination of 2009 the GDP, and the minimum wage. We'll continue to scan the table for any other years that match the value 2009. There are no more values that match 2009, so we go to the next row in our GDP data frame. That's 2010. So our output data frame will definitely have the year 2010 and will definitely have the GDP 27183. We'll scan the minimum wage table again. 2006 is not equal to 2010. 2007 is not equal to 2010. 2008 is not equal to 2010. 2009 is not equal to 2010. 2010, however, is equal to 2010. So now we have the matching pair 2010, 27183, and 9.5. And we'll continue to scan the rest of the table. There's no more matches, so we're going to move on to the next row in our GDP data frame and repeat the same process. Now notice this time there's no 2011 row in our minimum wage data. So our final output for this row for 2011 is going to be the value 2011, the GDP, and then minimum wage we will substitute not a number. Because this is a left join, we keep the values from the left-hand table and fill in blanks for the right-hand table's values. Let's revisit our code for a minute. What if we had reversed our join order by joining GDP to our minimum wage? In other words, we use the minimum wage data as our left-hand table and we use GDP as our right-hand table. Let's take a look at what this join would look like. 
I'm going to create a new variable called joined alt, and it will be minimum wage dot join GDP melt. Take a look in the variable explorer. Joined, our original joined data frame has 126 rows. Our new data frame joined alt has 401 rows. The same number of rows as our minimum wage data frame. Our original join data frame has the same number of rows as our GDP melt data frame. Notice how we have to scroll quite a ways in our data frame preview before we start to see GDP data appear. So notice how Pandas has kept all of the rows from the minimum wage data frame. What we've just demonstrated is a right-hand join. Same result as reversing the data frame order in a left join. So if we had said to Pandas, do GDP join on minimum wage, but then said do a right-hand join, that would have been the same thing as doing minimum wage join GDP melt. So let's take a look at the right-hand join. So remember, we're going to, if we do a right join where we join GDP melt to minimum wage, we're going to keep all of the rows from the right-hand table, in this case, minimum wage. So we're going to scan through GDP and look for any rows where the year is equal to 2006. And if we scan through our GDP, you can already see we have no rows that are equal to 2006. So in a right-hand join, we're going to join the rows from the left-hand frame to the right-hand frame. 2006, 2007, and 2008, they don't occur in the index for GDP. So we're going to substitute NAN for the GDP of those years. Let's skip ahead to the 2009 row. So we see 2009 has a minimum wage of 8.5 but there's also a matching 2009 in the GDP data frame. So our combined result, we're going to have 2009 GDP value and a minimum wage value. And then we will scan the rest of the table. Let's take a look at the full or outer join. What if we want to keep all of the rows from both of our data frames. Well, we can use something called the outer join. Now remember, we can use the how parameter in our join function to specify what kind of join we want. In this case, we're going to use how equals outer. So let's join these two data frames together. I'll create a variable called joined outer, and it will be GDP melt dot join min wage with how equal to outer. If we run this, we see that we now have a new data frame called joined outer with 442 rows. Let's take a look. So notice that we've kept all of the rows from our minimum wage file. We've substituted NAN for where we could not find a matching pair of jurisdiction and year. But notice Here's 2009. We have records for British Columbia and Canada, GDP records where we do not have a minimum wage record. We have preserved both data frames. So how does the outer join work? First, pandas will build a master list of rows using both data frames index columns. And then it will build the rows by looking up values in both data frames which have the same index values. So what does the outer join look like? Well, first off, we'll scan both tables indexes and we'll build up a union of those indexes. So we'll start in GDP and we'll add a new row for each of the indexes that we see. So after scanning through all of GDP, we have all of GDP's 
year index values. We do the same thing for minimum wage. In this case, 2006 doesn't already appear in our union of indexes, so we add it on to our union of indexes. We do the same thing with 2007, and then the same thing with 2008. 2009 already exists, so we don't need to add it again. Same with 2010, same with 2014, same with 15 and 17. But 2018 doesn't exist in both, so we add it in. And once the indexes are combined, Pandas will automatically sort our data frame indexes alphabetically in ascending order. Then we start scanning through our data frames and building up our final rows. So first, we'll start at index 2006 and scan our GDP table. There are no rows in the GDP table where the index has an entry for 2006. So for the GDP value, we're going to sub in NAN. Then we scan through minimum wage. There is a value for 2006 for minimum wage. We substitute in 6.5. And then we continue scanning the rest of the table. We'll build up the rest of our joined data frame by using this method. Another type of join is the inner join. So say you want to keep rows where only the indexes overlap in both data frames. So in other words, you don't want NANs substituted for anywhere where we have missing values. You want to keep values that appear in both data frames. So we can specify this type of join by using the how parameter and set how equal to inner. So let's try this in our code. We'll create a new variable called joined inner and set this equal to GDP melt dot join. We'll join in minimum wage and our how is going to be inner. Notice this time we only have 85 rows. The data frame we receive is the data frame that is made up of index values that appear in both tables. In other words, both indexes overlap. This is a much smaller data frame than what we've seen before with our left and right hand joins. So what does the inner join look like? So first, Pandas will scan the left-hand data frames index column and check the right-hand data frames index column for a corresponding entry. If we find one, the records will be joined together. Again, for the mathematically inclined, we build the intersection of indexes. So starting from 2009, we will scan through the minimum wage table and look for the value 2009 in our year index. We've found it, so we create a row for 2009, 23, 2.5, and 8.5. So we'll scan the rest of the minimum wage table just in case there's another row that has the value 2009 for the year. However, we're not going to find one, so we'll skip over this process. Let's move to the next row in GDP. The year is 2010, and if we scan through the minimum wage table, we find a match. 2010 and 2010, so we build a row with GDP 27183 and minimum wage 9.5. We're not going to find a matching entry for 2010 anywhere else in the table, so we're not going to build any more rows for the year 2010. Let's go to the next row in GDP. The year is 2011. We're going to scan the minimum wage table for any rows where the year is equal to 2011. Notice how we don't have any this time. So instead of adding NAN for minimum wage, because there is no matching entry in the minimum wage table for 2011, this row will not be added to our joined data frame. 